All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us tonight for our 2018 Volleyball uh, Preseason Coaches Conference call. Uh, just want to welcome all of you to the call. Uh, this is some very important information we're going to cover tonight. Um, we do have all of our regional managers on the phone, as well as you all know Susan, our wonderful state competition director. Um, so as we move forward, uh, if you could please, if you're on the computer, tell us in the chat that you are here, uh, your name, your full name, and what team or program you are with. Uh, as well, we'll have regional managers send out a, uh, an updated email asking and confirming who was on this call tonight so we can kind of track that moving forward. Uh, please keep your phones, computers on mute uh, unless you do have a specific question. At the end of this call, I will uh, unmute everyone. And we, if you do have any questions, we will answer them at that point. Um, this is a statewide call. So this is for state specific information, top to bottom. Please contain any regional questions for your regional managers. We'll have time for that at the end of the call, um, as well as in the chat box. Um, and obviously after this, please reach out to your regional managers as needed. So. Uh, the first thing we will discuss is we still have not reached our quota to have regional competitions in every region. Um, so there will only be a state volleyball tournament again. Um, and this information should all be on the agenda that was sent out to you guys by your regional managers. Um, but uh, the state event, the state fall classic will be November 16th, which is a Saturday at the Elevation Volleyball Club. Um, and you still will send your entries to your regional managers, okay? So you'll send everything to your regional manager just like you would for any other tournament. They'll get all the information in. That information is due Monday, October 14th. No later than Monday, October 14th. Um, so we can start getting the schedule made and all those good things. So uh, there will only be a state event this year. That being said, we've encouraged this last year. Uh, I know in the Northeast we've done it a couple of times, and I'm pretty sure in the other regions it happened. We encourage you guys to communicate with each other to set up scrimmages. Uh, you can run your own mini tournament if you want, a little round robin thing, just so you guys can get more gameplay time and opportunity uh, to get ready for our state. So, uh, and uh, as always, you guys know our, our regular practice, eight weeks of practice and training before state. Uh, that is a requirement, so please do your best to, to at least get an hour of training in each week for eight weeks before leading up to state. So uh, we're going to jump right into forms for – those of you that have been here before, just hang in there with us. And for our new people, uh, this is how you will uh, register everything with your regional manager. So, Michelle, you ready to take it over? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. So we're going to go to our normal website, Special Olympics Colorado, and we're going to go over the Get Involved tab and select Coach. From there, you're going to scroll down to Coaching Resources. And then from there, you're going to scroll down to the coach handbook and find coach handbook by sport. That is what you'll want to click on. Bring up all of the sports that we do provide. Um, so if you're, if you also coach another sport, this is where you can find that. We're going to go down to volleyball and we are going to start with the fact sheets there that we just kind of discussed. Uh, make sure you guys are printing these out and handing them out to families so that they are all on the same page of when it's going to be, where it's going to be, any deadlines, um, and just the odds and the ends of state competition. Okay, we're gonna go back out of there and we'll hit up the next form, which is the principles of meaning involvement. Essentially, this means that um, every teammate is valued and that the teammates have the ability and opportunity to contribute to the performance of the team. Um, so I definitely want you guys to read through this as well as know a little bit about the philosophy of our unified partners. So a situation where this may not be happening is in like a game winning situation. Partner takes it upon themselves to win the game. Let's say it's neck and neck, four and four, and the next um, point wins and that unified partner blocks a spike from the athlete of the next team. That's not what we're looking for. We really want to implement athletes to be helping with those game winning situations. So just be very mindful and make sure that you guys are abiding by that um, rule that we're trying to implement, okay? The next one is the coach roster, which you guys are familiar with. You guys are going to make sure you download this and save it before you write anything in it or we're not going to get anything that you put in. So just make sure you're doing that. Region, you'll put your sport in there, which competition you're going to, which is state, um, your team name, and your head coach name. 
Then you'll do the head coach day of event form. So make sure the person who's actually going to be at the event puts their phone number in there, any additional email, as well as the head coach email. Okay, so only coaches go on this part. So even if you put your head coach's information on the above stuff, you're still going to list them here. Um, any assistant coaches, um, and they all must be class A and they must have their background check unless um, they are younger than 17. Make sure you're putting the date of birth on there. We just wanna make sure that, you know, John Smith from Denver isn't the John Smith from the Southeast. Um, we wanna make sure that their class A history is the one that we're putting on the sheets that you get from us. And of course, you'll put their gender on there as well. We're gonna go back out of there and we are going to go to the entry form. A lot of the same information here. Um, one difference would definitely be whether you're unified or traditional. Um, if you guys have partners on your team, that means you are unified. If it's all athletes on your team, that means it is traditional. So make sure you guys are checking one of those so we can division you properly. From here, you're gonna start putting your athlete and partner names in. Um, try to get them in alphabetical order if you can, um, or maybe do it by athlete and then partner. It just helps us a little bit organizationally. Let us know if they're an athlete or a partner, what gender they are, and of course their date of birth. This is extremely helpful, again, with that situation where we don't wanna mix up somebody else in a different region. Um, it's also important that you guys put down their specific overall rating. Um, let's say you believe that your team is a four, do not put fours for everybody. We wanna make sure that you guys are playing against teams that um, are really close in that average. So what you would do is you would put down their overall rating and then you would uh, divide that, well, you'd add all that and then divide it by how many athletes you have on your team and you can actually get your team level that way. Um, but I'll also go over a different uh, way to know which level your team will be in a few minutes, okay? Make sure you're checking off if you're going to state, which is obviously a yes in this situation. Um, and then if you're missing any key players, that just means if you had a level one or a level two uh, last year and you don't have them this year and it might affect your team, you would click yes. Um, and then your team strength might be affected by that as well. Um, so let's say you did miss a few key players, then it might be a little bit weaker than last year. Okay. So we will make sure you check your team level again. Um, we want to make sure that you guys are division correctly. And again, I will give you an overall description of what levels we do provide. Okay, so this is a sample as well. Um, if you're ever curious, if you're doing it correctly, eyeball this and see if you are. And of course, if you still have questions, utilize your regional managers because we're here to help. So the rating form here. Um, so this is where you're gonna figure out if you're level one for your team or if you're level two, three or four. Level one is the highest. So this is gonna be very fast paced. The officials are going to be acting like it's a varsity game enforcing all the rules. Um, game awareness is pretty high, and sometimes you can't tell if your athletes or partners playing. So um, those are pretty high levels. You're going to see level two, which is still above average, but maybe a little bit slower pace. Um, maybe you can distinguish whether they're a partner or an athlete, um, and the game awareness isn't all the way to where it was with level one. So maybe um, we're still enforcing the rules, but could find them a little bit about what's going on. Level three, of course, that's an average, and then level four or lowest, so that's gonna be very slow pace. Maybe they're new at it, um, not there at the level one. So just make sure you guys are reading through this and um, reading your team appropriately. Okay, we're gonna go back out of there. This is the individual skills entry form. So this is a separate entry form you would turn into us rather than the team entry form. You'd fill out all the demographics there just like you did the other ones and then you would Putting your athlete name, your gender, your date of birth, and then your entry score, which we do have instructions on, and just that you are in fact attending state because that's the only one we are providing. Skills is a really good way to get to know the sport. So if you have some athletes that might be newer to it, um, or they're just not really wanting to do the competing aspect, they can do that as well. All right, so this is exactly how you would rate your um, skills athletes. So um, you would go through and you would put in your athlete's name so you don't get them confused. You would look at how they're serving um, based on the numbers that you see there is how you would score them. Um, and then that's how you would transfer 
their scores over to the um, entry form. Now this is specifically for your use. We don't necessarily need that. So um, we want your entry form, okay? All right, skills assessment. This again is for your use only. Um, this is just to help you guys assess what they would be at, how many attempts they had. Um, so again, just a tool for you guys to use for each one of those different skills for volleyball. All right, and then these instructions are useful because it does map out how we would be doing it at the competition. So try to keep that consistent. Um, it gives you a good visual and then also a good description underneath. So as long as you stick to that, um, there shouldn't be any surprises at the competition, okay? And then of course you will find the SOI volleyball rules, um, which is very extensive, very descriptive. So if you have time to read, so um, definitely look it over. This is what we would utilize if we don't have it in our SOCOL rules. So um, they are beneficial to know, but we do have a one or two pager about our SOCO volleyball rules that we do absolutely implement. So make sure you guys are up to date with these rules because these are the ones that you will see more than likely. So that is it for me. Um, do you guys have any questions about the entry forms? Okay, that's it for me then, Susan. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about just a couple of rules, um, a couple things just to keep in mind um, throughout the season and as you are uh, coaching at the tournament. Hopefully you guys can all hear me. Um, so I will go ahead and proceed. Um, the biggest, a couple of things I just wanna to touch base on. The first thing is the service line. We will have an adjusted service line. Um, but make sure you're pushing your athletes and really trying during practice to try to get them to use that, that farther, the actual service line. Um, the adjusted service line is really just for those athletes that, that need a little bit more help. The adjusted service line is non-negotiable at the tournament. It will be taped down um, in front of 10 feet in front of the actual service line, and that's where it will be. We'll not have anyone stepping in front of that and moving closer than that to serve. But again, just um, try to push your athletes. If your athlete is consistently getting it over from that adjusted service line, um, then try to push them back and have them work on maybe, you know, a few steps farther back and a few steps farther back and so forth and so on. Um, so really just, just think about that and how your athlete's going to have the best experience. Um, in addition, Michelle talked a little bit about skills. I want to touch on it a little bit more. Just, just keeping in mind that volleyball is a tough sport and not everyone's going to be able to follow the flow of the game. That doesn't mean they can't play volleyball with us. So we've got options for them to do skills. They'll go through different stations and work on um, skills that would lead up to them playing on a team. Um, so just keep that in mind for some of your athletes. Uh, skills are there to set the athletes up for success. Uh, they They'll be involved, they'll be touching the ball, they won't just be standing on the court kind of waiting for the ball to come to them. They'll be, they'll be more active, they'll be um, more, more engaged in the skill itself. So just keep that in mind for some of your athletes if that's something you want more information on and the sheets are a little confusing, please reach out to myself or your regional manager and we can cover um, all those things as well. Um, another thing to think about, uh, Michelle touched on a little bit, is that principle is a meaningful involvement. Um, and partner domination. Um, obviously, we understand there's some cases where the flow of the game is going to have a partner is going to hit it to a partner and that's going to possibly go over, right? Um, but we want to try to minimize that as much as we can. We want you guys to focus on those things in practice. Um, do we want you to stop the flow of the game if, if those kinds of things are happening? Absolutely not. But if those things are happening over and over and over again, then we're going to be having a conversation with you about about partner domination um, and about you know meaningful involvement and making sure the athletes are involved. Again, we want to set our athletes up for success, um, but that doesn't always mean the athlete on the team is the best spiker um, or the hitter. So maybe they end up being the setter or something something to that extent. But make sure that during those unified games, those athletes are just as involved as the partners. Um, and when the game gets tight, like Michelle talked about, when it gets down to it and it's it's game point. 
we really want to keep the same flow of the game that's been going throughout the entire game. Um, I think that we want to see the athletes win or lose a fair game as opposed to just partners winning the game. So just keep those things in mind um, when you're, when you're coaching, when you guys are practicing and your league play and those kinds of things. Um, and I really think it's a, a partner education um, thing as well. So if you guys are looking for information to share with your partners on how to have them best involved in that, reach out to us and we can, we can help with that as well. But we are looking to you guys as the coaches to really make sure your partners are fully aware that the athletes are, are the main reason we're there and that we're wanting them to be in, just as involved as the partners playing together, really keeping that playing together aspect in mind. Uh, I think that's all I have as far as rules go. Do you guys have any questions? Great. Adrian, I think I'll turn it over to you now. All right, can everybody hear me? Yep. All right, perfect. All right, so we're going to talk about medical applications and Class A. So uh, towards the end of July, early August, your regional managers should have sent to you um, your missing paperwork needs for each of your teams uh, based off of last year's rosters. So uh, if you haven't received those, please reach out to your regional manager. Um, they will be able to provide you with those updates um, these are based off of last year's rosters as I mentioned so anybody who's going to be a new addition to your team for this year uh, you'll need to provide those names to your regional manager so we can check up on them and provide you with the most recent information so um, in order to get your updated uh, athlete medical forms you're going to go to this get involved tab and click on athlete and then you're going to scroll down to the bottom here. Um, you, this is where you go to register your athlete. So uh, click on the online athlete participation medical application. Uh, this is a new addition for us this year. So uh, we're trying to direct all our uh, athletes and families, coaches, teams to this page so that you guys can complete everything online. It really expedite this process for us, for uh, everybody um, and our medical team and getting it all entered online. So um, it's very straightforward. Um, what's important here is to have the completed uh, physical examination form by your doctor already on hand in order to complete this form. Otherwise, you'll be uh, directed to uh, complete this form once you have that uh, form on hand. So. Assuming you have it on hand, you'll be able to then work your way through this step-by-step -step process. If you don't have the physical examination form, the best way to find it is here on this page under the um, link right there. Um, this will provide you with the one pager that you need. Your regional managers also have this form available too, so we can uh, send that to you electronically in a PDF file if needed. Um, this physical examination form needs to be completed by a licensed medical professional. Okay. Um, at the bottom, it's important. Um, we will not accept it unless it has uh, a signed um, name and license number from your from the doctor completing the form. Okay. So take a step back and go to the on, online athlete participation medical f application. And then uh, this form right here is a uh, electronic copy of the full form as well. Um, the full five page document. Um, this release form is one that is a continued hang up for a lot of our teams. Um, it's important that we get this uh, completed and returned to us. This is, uh, the what we need in order to clear an athlete to participate in competition. We need it signed um, by the athlete or guardian. And then uh, each one of these initial tabs over on the right side also needs to be initialed by the individual completing the form uh, so that we know that they understand and read everything uh, completed there. Uh, athlete application for participation. This is our health history form. Um, everything that you need there um, is listed as well. Uh, please complete this uh, as extensively as possible. 
Um, I know that whenever we send these over to our medical team, they will um, return it back to us if they haven't received everything um, that they need um, in order to clear the athlete for participation. All right, um, now for class A's, uh, for coaches and unified partners, you can go to either the coach or unified partner drop down menu, um, become a coach um, and re renew your coach. No, All right. My bad. <laughs> nope, that's okay. <laughs> yep. Hey. Here we go. Um, then renew your coach registration class A. <laughs> this is where you go to complete that document. Um, it's uh, about a 10 minute process. It will uh, prompt you, and it's easy, straightforward to complete. Uh, I would send this to all your uh, coaches and unified partners who do not have this on file. Uh, within the next couple of days upon receiving it, uh, your anybody who's 18 or over will then be directed to complete a uh, volunteer background check. We need them to complete both in order for them to uh, be fully cleared for participation. The Class A is really important um, for us and for the unified partners and coaches. Um, it not only serves as a background check and clearance for us to uh, make sure that they're able to compete, but it also uh, serves as a, um, insurance in case they do get hurt at a practice or a competition. Um, our insurance policy will kick in after the individual's insurance policy covers their medical bills. Um, I have had this happen a few times with our unified partners and um, anybody who has had their class A on file, has benefited from that opportunity. Um, if we do not have an active class A on file for them, uh, they will not be able to benefit from our insurance and liability waivers. Okay. Um, that is about it for class A. Uh, you have the two options there for unified partners and uh, coaches under the uh, individual drop downs that CHOP just showed you. Um, if you have any questions about either of these uh, medicals or class A's, please reach out to your regional managers and we'll be able to help you out. And I'm kicking it back to Chuck for health and wellness. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, just going to touch base on this real quick. Uh, I know some of our volleyball teams do already have fitness captains, but for the 2020 year, uh, Jenna Tweet, uh, who is our one of our fitness uh, staff, uh, has been trying to get a fitness captain, an athlete fitness captain on every team in the state. Uh, it's a very lofty goal, but it's a goal worthwhile and worthy uh, because it benefits everyone involved. Uh, and it also provides our athletes with some really, really cool leadership opportunities. Uh, so what happens is uh, you'll have the opportunity to nominate some of your athletes or athletes can nominate athletes, uh, anything of that nature, but your regional managers will send out a one page PDF with instructions on how to nominate someone. Uh, and we will be accepting those throughout the fall for the 2020 year. So uh, in the next couple of weeks prior to Labor Day, your regional managers will be sending out their fall seasonal coaches emails. Um, and that will be an included document. Uh, we won't go through that tonight. I just wanted to give you all a heads up. It really, really is a cool opportunity to provide a uh, some of your athletes with with a leadership opportunity to help them, you know, lead stretching before uh, before practices, to to lead post practice stretching, and just to learn really some healthy habits um, and get everyone on on the right foot when it comes to uh, how to act, how to eat, how to exercise outside of just your competitive one or two hours a week of training or special Olympics. So look for your, for that from your regional managers again in the coming weeks in your uh, all seasonal coaches email. So. Uh, lastly, we're going to kick it back to Susan, and she's going to touch base on the Fall Classic. Susan, you with us? Sorry, I forgot <laughs> You're good, um, I found it. Sorry. Can you go ahead and pull up the, uh, the, summer, or the Fall Classic flyer, please, for me? Um, as Jeff mentioned, it will be uh, November 16th, and we will be at Elevation Volleyball. Um, you can see the address on the screen there. It's not their newest space. It's their in-between space, but it's still pretty amazing. Um, if you guys remember from a couple years ago, we were in their space, and it was a little bit tighter. Um, this space is just as nice as that and actually uh, bigger, and there's more seating, so it should be better suited for everybody. Um, 
again, entries, Jeff covered all those things. So in volleyball, we will be offering traditional volleyball, which is all athletes. We'll be offering unified, and we'll also be offering um, the skills competition, as I mentioned. Uh, we will be doing an opening ceremonies. Uh, we'll be doing that at 8.30, so make sure those teams that are playing early, those early games in the morning are there to be able to be a part of that. We'll do a parade, and we'll have a pre presentation of colors and a few other things. Um, we will be having food trucks, at least one or two food trucks on site for you guys, um, as we've done in the past, to just give you a little bit more, um, a, little, a few options there, since not, not a ton of um, fast food places are close to that facility um we'll do like we've done in the past but you guys will each of you will play two games and we'll be awarded based on that um other than that i think that's kind of the gist of state volleyball does anyone have any questions on state volleyball great i think i'm all set then. awesome okay uh we appreciate you guys calling in tonight uh, i just again want to make uh make a, a quick reference. If I really do encourage you guys all to try to set up some sort of scrimmage. Um, I know regional managers are more than happy to help communicate and set those things up. Uh, again, the more opportunities our athletes get since we're only providing a state competition this year, um, just to be in a competitive environment, uh, to learn to handle those things. Uh, I really do encourage that. So reach out to your regional managers with any questions. Um, we'll stay on for about four or five more minutes. If anyone does have any specific regional questions or state questions in general, uh, if not, thank you for joining us and uh, have a great season and we'll see you guys in mid-November. Thank you and take care. Yes. Hi, this is Joan down in Colorado Springs. If I can get the email address for the, app, the volleyball teams for Colorado Springs, I'd appreciate it to see if we can set up some organized um, game nights. Hey, Joan, it's Michelle. Um, I actually planned on sending you all an email tomorrow so that you'll have everyone's contact information and we can set up some dates um, and just more things like that. So look out for that email tomorrow. Yeah, because the three of us have been meeting trying to set up some a uh, gym time. So great. Um, and, and I know we're, I'm here at softball and they're like, are you listening to the call? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. So we're trying to set it up. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, we will get on that um, first thing tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, we'll do the same thing like we did last year. We'll, yes. You know, we tried to try, I think we had like six or eight teams. Yeah, it was great. We'll okay. do that again. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Bye. Yes.